This is a motor from my car seat. It controls the back, uh, going backward and forward, and it stopped working. So I tried to find one, but they were several hundred dollars online and almost impossible to find anyway. This one's a, a 12 volt, made in Germany. Vallejo, I think is the name, Kuiper. Anyway, very, uh, almost no information on these. I thought it'd be kind of easy to, uh, to look at, but it's not. Anyway, so to open up the motor, to fix it, you have to bend these little tabs. There's four of them. Just get some pliers and bend them, and then you can slip out this piece. And if you don't know how motors work, you have this... Uh, copper wire around, coiled around, and right here, it's um, you can see the the marks left. This spins, but on this copper bit here are these two um, opposite connectors right here that push up against it, and it alternates the electric current back and forth as it spins. So there's always one touching this little cylinder of copper. You can see the splits in it. So it keeps flicking and, and uh, contacting alternately to make the motor spin. Anyway, enough of the lesson about motors. What you need to know is that these little deals that are pushing up against it can wear out. And uh, I've already opened this one. And there's a spring behind it that's can get lost, so careful of that. Okay, there you go. Now these are called carbon brushes, motor brushes, and uh, they can wear out. You can see the groove that's left. It's kind of a circle shape. Now there's this little notch in the bottom of this one that helps hold it back while you're assembling it. And then uh, once it's in, these little tabs are the release tabs, almost like a trigger of a gun. So if you, a toy gun, if you cock it back, it locks the clip. And then if you pull this little, little trigger watch, see that? So if you try to insert it without these pushed back, it'll just, it won't go. It'll get stuck on the lip of the uh, copper cylinder. Anyway, so I have to just replace these. Problem is it wore these down so much that they're not making contact and thus there's not a complete circuit. So anyway, I got uh, some of these from our good friends in communist China for a buck 60 and that includes shipping. So the measurement on this one is four centimeters by four centimeters by 10. And uh, I think it should fit perfectly in there. If not, you can just shave this down. These are just carbon, just like a pencil lead. So they're easy to um, alter if you need to. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to leave some of this uh, copper thread there. And this one doesn't have a trigger. It does have a beveled edge though on top. Um, so these bottom edges are square and those slight bubbles, see, you can see the glint. It's shiny and so anyway, those bevel edges face up on there because it's not a perfect square in there. I don't know why they are like that. They just are. So I'm going to turn this around to the underside here. And I'm going to copy, at least try to. I've never done this before. Should work though. Let's see. I'm going to put in an, a groove in the same location if I can. 
There's the old one, so I'm going to dig it out. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, so you're just... There you go, that's about the location of it. Second one. And if this edge is not square, the trigger edge, it's just going to slip out. So you got to make sure it's pretty square at the end. I don't mean square this way, I mean square depth. This has got to be straight up with not curve on it. It's kind of hard to hold this thing. You can't clamp it or anything, you'll just crush it into dust. Alright, let's try that. Shove it in there. And uh, I'll do the spring first. This spring might be too big. Okay. Cram it in here. I'm going to cut off a tiny bit more of this spring. Better to cut too little than too much, or you'll be hunting for a new spring. And just a tiny touch of solder. Okay. Okay, now it looks like. We're gonna have to loosen this up. There we go, bend this up, bend it a bit. It made it stiff, so. So check the movement. Make sure you got good movement here. Cause the, um, you know, the solder wicks into the strands of the copper wire and It'll make it like uh, like you dipped a rope in super glue. It's all just gonna stiffen up. So careful how much solder you do on that. Just a tiny bit. All right, <clears throat> now we'll just shove it in here and close this little piece of brass. A little tricky, but I think it'll work fine as long as that. Spring doesn't weasel its way out somehow. I don't think it'll, it's going anywhere. Now this is a lot longer than the last one. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can lift this trigger up. Keep it locked. Yeah, it's slightly locked in place. I don't know if that's back far enough. Probably not. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the same thing to this other side and solder the wire right there on the edge of that little piece of copper. All right, I can tell that this is not gonna be this is gonna be too long and it will get in the way. I'm gonna shave off some Almost a little saw might be better, but we'll see how, how it works. Maybe if I just score it all around and try to snap off a chunk. 
You know, I'm just going to grind this down on a belt sander. Actually, a belt sander is a little overkill. All I used was uh, some sandpaper. And it works real fast. So this one should be the right size. I might take the old one out and do the same thing to it. But let's go ahead and now pop this one in. All right, I put in uh, this one and the trigger system and everything. Look, it's held back. Works pretty good. So I'm just uh, going to take this first one I did and sand it down. Pull it out. I pulled it out of the clip and I'm just going to sand it down to the right depth. A little scratch on it. You can kind of make it out right there. That's where I'm going to go to. Yeah, I couldn't find the exact size on eBay. I could only find a 4x4x10. Four by four by and uh, I come from China pretty quickly. I'll shove it back in. I'm a little worried about how many times I've opened and closed this now. It's going to fail on me. So, again, these little triggers, they hold the carbon brushes back. And they're called brushes because they brush up against the uh, motor, but they're not what you regularly think is a, of a brush. All right. Now I line it up, and uh, these triggers should engage automatically once it's in. There's something in the way. Hmm. I think these need to be shaved down even more. I'm looking and there's some marks on it. They actually look a lot like, um, I shaved them at an angle, they look like uh, locks on a door, the little latch that sticks out. So I didn't, I figured if it was tapered I wouldn't have to shave the entire thing, it was easier to cut it like that. Anyway, let's give it a go. Line this up again. Here we go. Yeah, that was it. Went in perfect. Now we just bend these back in place and we can hook it up and see if it works. All right, we just installed, reinstalled this motor, put the shaft through all the way and reset the locking pin. Locking clamp and uh, go ahead, Aaron. Let's give it a try. Look at that. So, some worn out motor brushes was all it was. A little bit of pain to get to, but very cheap to fix. All right, that's, <laughs> that's plenty good. Thanks for helping. Okay.